and welcome to the Taylor series. Now this is an important part of calculus, and it'll be all over the AP test, so this is important, make sure you know it. Okay, this actually isn't that complicated. All it means, really, is that the sum of a Taylor series is you take the function, put it to the first derivative, second derivative, or whatever k is, put it over that number to the factorial, um, plug in the number that it's centered around, which oftentimes is zero, uh, multiply by x minus wherever it's centered, to the power of k. Okay, so now that we're done with my example, we're going to have my student Lenny come up and do one for us. You're going to do ln of x centered at x equals 3. Now Lenny, this, this um, function would usually go on forever if we kept going, so I'm just going to have you do the second order, which means going to where k equals 2, okay? Alright, so now we can start plugging these in. So you'll have for the first curve, it's going to be ln of 3 times x minus 3 to 0 over 0 factorial. Um, then you get plus 1 over 3 times x minus 3 to the first over 1 factorial plus no, minus. Okay, so now that we've finished with the Taylor series, we're going to move on to something new. Alright, so the McLaren series is basically a simplified version of the Taylor series. So, what it is is just the whole list of the function out in terms of like an infinite series. So there's plenty of different functions you could use for this, but there's only four you're going to be concerned with when it comes to calculus. Okay, so these are the four functions, and then I'll quickly generate the term. Okay, so these are the McLaren series generated. Are there any questions? So are these the same as the Taylor series? In a sense, yes, but McLaren series can only work at x equals zero. So if you wanted to try doing these at pi over four, you would be wrong. Are there any other questions? So can I do this at pi over four? No. <laughs> All right, Lenny. Well, you can use these McLaren series to modify other ones and find answers more easily. So for a sense, if you were to do e to the two x, you would just take every x term in this series and put a 2 in front of it, including the square. Do you want to try a sample problem? Let's do it. All right, Lenny, so for your sample problem, I want you to find the series for 1 over 1 minus 2x at x equals 0. All right. <laughs> Excellent, you are correct. So, we've talked about Taylor series, we've talked about McLaren series, now we're going to go a little more in depth with the range error bounds. So, I know that based on what you've all heard, you're probably pretty scared about this, you're probably screaming in terror right now, but don't worry, it's not really something that you have to be scared of. You see, we have this really confusing equation right here, but it's really not that bad once you break it down. So you have r sub n of x, and that's simply what stands for the error that you're looking for, is less than or equal to, now m times r to the n plus 1, that's just simply the derivative 
of the term after what you're looking for. I'll explain that more in depth later with our example. Then we have x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, which is just this, the, um, which is just the Taylor series of your next term. Once again, basically what the Lagrange um, is, you're just looking at your next term, and that's what you're looking for. So, to better explain this, let's give an example. Let's say that you have sine of x, and that, and that sine of x is going to be centered at zero, but you're looking for the error between point, negative point 0.1 and point 0.1. And that is going to be the second term that you're looking to maximize. So, how do we start this, you may wonder? Well, we started, since we're looking at the second term, we're going to take the third derivative of sine of x in your equation along with the third term in the, in the Taylor series, in this case the McLaren series, that goes with sine of x centered at zero. So, as you know, sine of x is going to be x minus x cubed over 3 facts factorial plus x fifth over 5 factorial. And this is going to be the term that you're taking. So, for your error, and E is the same thing as R sub n of x, it's just going to be less than or equal to negative cosine of x times x fifth over 5 factorial. Now these x's have different values. What you need to do is independently find where the value when you plug it in is the greatest on this scale. So for negative cosine x, that's going to be at 0. Because a cosine of 0, as we all know, is equal to the absolute value of cos negative cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So, this is going to be 0, and then x fifth over 5 factorial is going to be the greatest at x equals 0.1. So, your error is going to be less than or equal to um, the absolute value of negative cosine 0 times point. 1 to the fifth over 5 factorial. Plug that into your calculator and you'll get the error. All right, so we're going to take the next part. It's going to be x cubed over 3 factorial. Um, and then you're going to maximize the dx. So it's going to be e to the 0 0.01 times Yeah, it's fine, but I'm not really going to cut some of this out. Declare it. I mean, you said Taylor. Hey, Kitty! You messed it all up! It's on the board. How am I not getting this? Two factorial is oh, wait, no. two. Wait, no.